This is pretty tight now. That's what she said. Okay. We can unscrew that if you want. All right, so. All right, go, go ahead, cut it. Go ahead, cut it. You heard it here. Won't it be nice when we have this much extra light? Yeah. I don't think he's as enthusiastic about that as I am. I'm not sufficiently enthusiastic? No, you're not. <laughs> well, that's just preposterous. <laughs> well, I'm finally back in my workshop again for the first time in a while. And today I'm going to start building the skylights that are going to replace the emergency hatches in the bus. This is something that a lot of people do in their schoolie conversions, so I'm certainly not the first. Uh, and normally it looks like a square box with a clear top on it. But I don't get to build the square, I get to build a quadrilateral. We're going to use the pre-existing steel support beams that are already there on either side of each of the emergency hatches to attach the new skylight. Unfortunately, they're not perfectly parallel to each other in either case. And in fact, they're about an inch wider at one end than they are at the other end, which creates certain complications when it comes to building these hatches. Now, the other alternative would be to take down those beams and then re-drill them into the roof, but we really don't want to add any additional holes to the roof that we're going to have to patch. So instead, I'm just going to be making a wonky little box. They also weren't real careful when they cut out the holes, for those emergency hatches. They are not perfectly square. And in some cases, they're a good half inch or inch off in different areas on that square. So it's gonna be a little tricky to get uh, this thing to fit perfectly right. And I do imagine there's gonna be a little bit of jimmying going on later on. I did go over there multiple times and take lots of measurements uh, just to make sure that I could build it as close as possible at home and then take it over there. I'll be honest, I'm real scared that I'm gonna get this together and then realize I didn't account for something and it's not gonna fit and I'm gonna be rebuilding it. But hopefully, with all of the prep work I've done, I'm hoping it'll work out okay. One tool that we happened to have that was particularly helpful here was this digital angleizer. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later when I start putting the box together. I'm kind of a fly by the seat of my pants kind of girl and I don't always take the time to draw plans for things but this time I actually took a lot of time and drew out very specific plans for doing this so that I didn't mess it up. Let's do the front hatch first. These side pieces actually have to go in ever so slightly. <laughs> so I'm going to have to cut an angle of about one degree off of each of these. The reason I'm making the box stepped up like this is to hopefully help prevent water from coming in. The top of the outer edge of the base of the box will sit about two and a half inches above the top of the roof. Water will have to go through that first weather seal, then go up about an inch and go through a second weather seal. So I'm hoping that this step design will help minimize the amount of water that'll come in at least around the edges of the box. But, you know, we'll see. I will admit that I actually got this idea from somebody else. Haha! <laughs> so we'll put a link to his page in here. <laughs> Now getting back to that digital angleizer I mentioned before, this thing takes far more precise measurements of angles than I could ever do myself, which was hugely helpful here because I was dealing with angles that were so close to 90 degrees but not exact.
Now, some people would prefer to use pocket holes in a situation like this, which is, you know, fine. I think it's kind of a personal preference. I felt like this was gonna be a little bit stronger than pocket holes, but you know, if you want to, go for it. This morning I took the big part of the box over to the bus just to see if it's actually going to fit, if I made it right, and it fits like a glove. So I am psyched about that. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's a little worrying when you're not making something that's perfectly square. It's real easy to make something with 90 degree angles, but when you start veering off from that, it gets a little tricky. So I'm pretty psyched that that worked out as well as it did. And now what I'm doing is I'm actually making my own wood filler. We did buy the plastic wood, the stuff in the bottle, but I actually find it a little bit better to make my own out of just regular old wood glue, whether it's the Gorilla Glue or the Tight Bond. Either one is great. Uh, and a little bit of sawdust from whatever it was that you were cutting. And while that dries, I'm gonna start on number two. Now this is the first one that I made and it's not quite fitting properly. <laughs> not such a big shocker when it's the first one you made. But uh, I think just a little bit of sanding is actually gonna correct that. <laughs> the master is coming. Any Doctor Who fans out there? Uh, you may notice that I have uh, made this top a little bit loosey-goosey here and that was not a screw up, I did that on purpose. And the reason is because uh, as you go through different seasonal changes and temperature changes, wood can expand and contract a little bit. And I just wanted to make sure that there was enough wiggle room in here to make sure it was always gonna be able to open and close. And also, I'm gonna be putting several coats of marine varnish on this, and that's gonna eat up a lot of the space here in these crevices. And if I'd made it tight to fit, um, initially, it would give it no wiggle room at all, and we would have a tough time getting it closed once I got all of those coats of varnish on it. down to cutting the Lexan and here's the thing about Lexan it is very expensive it's about 70 bucks for this one sheet which will make me two which is great but it's expensive and it's not something you want to mess up the cut on so we had to have a discussion about whether or not we wanted to have these angles be perfect on the top given that this is not a perfect square so we agreed that we are going to have a little bit of an overhang on you know either side of these. Although the minor OCD in me really wants to make this perfect, ultimately I think we're better off if we kind of let that one go a little bit, especially since it's gonna be on the roof and we're not gonna see it. Come here, come here, come here. Hi, Woody, hey, Woody, hey, my little workmate. Hi, say hi. Hey. Oh, it looks good, it looks like a nice cut. Right. You want me to put some in right in here? 
Nope. No. No, I actually, if it makes you feel better. Makes me feel better? <laughs> all right. Oh, no, no. It would make me feel a little bit better to have all the gaps filled in. Uh, you uh, already compromised quite a bit. I did. <laughs> did. You're right. are things of beauty my friends I'm so psyched about the way these have come out so far one of the last things I need to do before I start putting hinges on and such is adding another bead of caulk uh, around the edges here to make sure that no water gets in and for that I am using Proflex RV flexible sealant to use this all over your RV we got a bunch of bottles of it so I'm gonna use a little bit of this and hopefully seal this sucker up one thing I have to keep reminding myself about all of this is that it's more important for it to be functional than to look pretty, <laughs> which is hard for me. Uh, but you know, it's definitely a lot more important for all of the holes to be sealed up properly, uh, rather than you know worrying about whether or not I get a little bit of goopiness around. All right, so uh, right now I am waiting for the rubber seals to come in for the hatches. So in the meantime, I'm gonna be taking out these old hatches, which I don't actually think is gonna be all of that tough because they're really just kind of screwed in here with a little bit of sealing. So, uh, you know, should be relatively straightforward to pull these out, but <laughs> famous last words, right? You know, the thing is, thing is you really have to think about these things very holistically because before I can put the hinges on the hatches I have to also know first where the uh, solar panels are going to go up here because you don't want to open it up and if you want to be able to you know exit from the inside of the bus you don't want to be stepping out right onto the solar panels <laughs> so you really have to think about where those are going to go before I actually even put the hinges on these things. So it's a, it's a long process. It's like chess. You got to think several steps ahead of time before you actually make your move. Right? It's like chess. It's like four dimensional chess. You want me to move or close this up so you can get so you can get in go get over i mean just for a moment okay no problem wanna... no problem <sighs> when you have a curved roof you pretty much want to walk right in the middle It's not me. Getting on this roof is not particularly fun. <laughs> not just because of the height, but because it's all completely curved. So getting good footing without slipping off is quite scary. She's <clears throat> butyl tape. Yikes. thing was a really good opportunity to experiment with what will or won't get off all of these sticky things that are on this bus. 
A heat gun definitely helps with just about everything, so I'm really glad we have a couple of those available. But it doesn't remove everything. So I tried Mineral Spirits, which worked really well on the black gunk, whatever that was up there, by just soaking it for a few minutes, letting it sit, and then wiping it off. But it didn't do anything at all for the butyl tape or the reflective safety tape. What worked really well on the butyl tape was acetone, and I had just gotten a small bottle of it from my local grocery store in the nail polish section just to see if it worked, and it almost completely dissolved it, which was fantastic. Of course, you have to be very careful with acetone because it will also remove the paint. The acetone didn't really do much for the reflective safety tape, but what did was rubbing alcohol, and it worked even better when I heated it up a little bit with the heat gun first and then just scrubbed it down. But it was still a pretty painstaking process and took a lot of time. stripping finally came in so I'm gonna get this attached and get the rest of this box put together it already comes with adhesive on the back of it but I am adding in some of this 3m gasket adhesive just to really make sure it stays on there good really doing it here we need to also put wood uh, uh, met these metal screws okay back here because okay. it's sagging too much yeah okay now in hindsight it would have been pretty easy to make these into 90 degree angles see this so screw them and screw them back in but pretty pretty tight that's what she said Scraping here. I don't like that one bit. Let me sand that off. Okay. We did get both hatches installed, although it was a lot more uh, time consuming and tedious than we thought it would be, including two trips to Home Depot for additional shims and longer screws, and a lot of cursing. Is it coming through at all? Not that I can see. I can see it. I have to feel it. What kind of material is this? <laughs> oh, f man, what the f is this? These are f self tapping screws, for f sake. Okay. Of course, the second one went in a lot easier and a lot faster than the first one did. Uh, but by the end of the day, we were pretty much sick of this. <laughs> and so we decided to just leave it unsealed and come back today to seal it up. 
we had kept a few of the ceiling panels so that we would have some extra sheet metal to patch things up in case we needed it. And so this morning we went down and cut a few strips off of those to help fill in some of those gaps that were still left over uh, around those hatches. That attachment from DeWalt for cutting metal is absolutely amazing, by the way. I already had that from before and I'm so glad that I did because that is a nice little tool that I think we're gonna end up using a lot in this project. He actually already got here about a half an hour ago, so he's already working. So I'm gonna go in and see how he's doing. But you got a sticker off? Yeah, yeah not, that, really, not really critical work right now, but. No, but has to be done. And it is, that is a pain. And there's a ton of it on this bus too. I know. All these different stickers and crap. I started oh. doing this one here too, so. They're a pain. I gotta admit, Alex did an awesome job sealing these things up with some Eterna Bond and then also uh, some Dicor at the corners. And we really thought it was gonna rain today, which was gonna be great, because then we could test out to see if these things are watertight. But unfortunately, I think it's gonna pass us by, which really sucks because we don't have any kind of water out here at the storage area. And we can't actually drive it anywhere right now because there's currently no seat. So <laughs> we're kind of stuck for testing it out until we do get a good dousing of rain. But until then, I am thrilled to finally be getting something new in this thing. I mean, seriously, look at this. Look at how much lighter it is compared to the first day that we got it. I mean, it's a huge transformation with just these little tiny boxes. I'm so happy. 